So we're here at uh, Linaro Connect with Zach. So what do you do? I'm uh, the Linaro Android platform lead. But of course I've said that like 1600 times. So I need something better like I run a Ferrari dealership in Austin, Texas. Isn't that better? But the Ferraris are going to run Android pretty soon, no? Darn straight they will. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they have to. There's no other choice. I, I, I completely agree. I completely agree. I think if you look... If you look at all the platforms, Android is like the Ferrari of mobile phone platforms. So how awesome would you say Android is? It's the awesomeness, awesomest of all the platforms. I mean, look at what Android's done. Android, Android changed the game. Android made it possible for people to not only produce platforms quickly that people wanted, but they built an entire ecosystem. They broke into the mobile phone space where it used to be remember the Nokia days where you had to you had to qualify an app for six months what were you qualifying some notepad app are you kidding me now I can run Angry Birds now I can run VoIP now I can run everything Android made that possible and what makes Android possible Linux the Linux kernel makes Android possible it's a fantastic example of open, proprietary, OEM, community, all coming together. It is what that looks like. So do you think these Google guys, that were, I mean, they bought Android, but do you think these guys that started Android, they basically are perfect, or could they have done some things different, or not yet? Hey, you know, who am I to say? It's all working, right? So, given everything, I think that I think that in hindsight, hindsight says that they were right. But if everything's working, so what do you have to do? What, what's left for you to do if everything's working? What well, do you it, working? it's all the SOC manufacturer's fault. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the deal. The hardest problem is enablement. And enablement is made harder by binary blobs. Binary blobs are hard to integrate. They're hard to work with. If the companies that distributed binary blobs were to create an ecosystem, an open ecosystem, where users can work with those blobs, improve those blobs in such a way, maybe standardize the interface to those blobs, then hey, yeah, you can have a blob, but handle the integration. Don't just say, we're going to hire 50 50 people in India, we're going to hire 50 people in China, we're going to hire 50 people in Illinois to solve this problem. You know, get in front of the problem. What Lenaro does with the Linux kernel is nothing more than make it easier for people to use the Linux kernel on these ARM SOCs. And in the same way, we need to do the same thing with binary blob enablement. We need to make it easier to integrate a Molly lib. We need to make it easier to integrate SGX. We need to make it easier to do with those things. We need to create the abstractions and the APIs so that those binary components can just plug right in. So that's the long that's the long end. And and Google has nothing 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 to do with that. In fact, they fight that at every at every point because why wouldn't they? They, they, they have to fight it. That's what's slowing them down. And in fact, when you use a unit and you have a binary uh, a bi a, a component in a binary blob blow up, that just decreases user usability of, an, of a product. Plus, it really hurts the upgrade story. How can I upgrade a unit to the latest ICS when that unit was integrated with a binary blob that was compiled one time on some random person's computer and thrown over the over the fence for the 50 person team in who knows where to integrate it the fact is is if you can create an ecosystem that's alive if you can create a place where these baselines can live then they can be upgraded and android can be upgraded and that's going to take the OEMs it's going to take the SOC manufacturers and it's going to take Google, and it's going to take Lenaro to all work together and to all solve that problem. So that's what you're doing. You're fixing that 
thing that a lot of people comment on the blogs, they, they, they complain about. Yes, that is what that That's is what ultimately what we that is what we are working on. Yes, the whole thing about upgrading quickly and smoothly every device. Absolutely, and you know we're not working on it directly. We're not we're not you know we don't have the 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 billet to to go and do that because that's a big problem like i said there's four gigantic entities in that right soc manufacturers oems google and lenaro which represents open source r those are four big divergent have different goals uh, organizations but what i'm trying to do in lenaro for my part is to not make the problem worse certainly and to try to find ways and solutions that we can actually make it easier to upgrade and ultimately solve that binary blob problem. So, uh, try to explain a little bit what kind of work you're doing. Uh, you're working with a bunch of other guys. Who are these guys? A bunch of who guys? A bunch of other guys. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, so what we're doing is we're making Android the best it can be on ARM. That's what we want to do. ARM is a fantastic platform. You know, ARM, is, ARM was born of embedded systems and has grown up into a platform that you can, that rivals any um, general purpose processor on, on the market. And what we're doing is we're working with the tool chain group, we're working with the, the kernel, we're working with AOSP, we're working with the members, we're working with the OEMs to make sure that when Android gets put out there, that for our part, we're tr we, we can make it as best as we can for, for the little piece of whatever, for the little thing that we, that we can do. We can't do much, but we can push patches to the kernel. We can work with the kernel upstream and, and Google to make sure that the changes to the Google kernel that are necessary to actually uh, boot a Linux kernel on an Android device can, can get in, right? We can, we, can, we can support the Google engineers that are trying to do that work because we understand that Android is the most successful Linux platform on the planet. It, it is the way to do it. And there's a lot of people that have very different goals and a very different mindset. But it all comes together in this wonderful device that allows me to not only play Angry Birds, but, you know, change regimes and have fun with my with my mobile platform and write my own apps for my mobile platform that's what open that's what that's why open source got started open source is not a bunch of gray beards sitting around a table open source to me is can I hack on my device and if I want to share what I've done can I share what I've done and that's what it means to me now I appreciate principle and I appreciate pragmatic, pragmatism and, and I think that the world is a big, big wonderful place and, and, all, and each person has their own motivations for doing things and I respect those motivations. Um, personally, I like to see people come together to produce a fantastic solution to a problem and I think Android does that. So uh, originally the first version of, of Android was, let's say, Thanks to the Qualcomm CPU that came and uh, enabled that kind of stuff. Right. And then, uh, let's say there was uh, NVIDIA on the tablet a uh, year ago and uh, the OMAP 4 for the ICS. Is it possible that, at least for the four members of uh, Linaro, that the next version of, uh, of Android is more likely going to just work on a broader range of SOCs? Absolutely, absolutely. You know, the kernel upstreaming work we do for these SOCs is, is really important. Making, maintaining enablement in the upstream kernel means that derivative SOCs are easier to enable than they would have been. So if you look at 
if you look at a, an, an organization who doesn't maintain good upstream support versus an organization that does maintain good upstream support, what you see is that as the organization that doesn't maintain good upstream support, as the kernel moves and as things get developed, sorry there was a yeah. butterfly, as things get developed, that their, that their support delta grows and grows and grows to, uh, to, a, to a point where they kind of are weighed down by, by this huge delta. And what they end up having to do is they end up having to kind of start again. And that's going to slow them down. Now, an organization that does spend time to upstream, that does work with the kernel and work with Google and work with their OEMs to maintain a, a code base that is alive and that is upstreamable and, and works with the community that they're depending on, well, their delta is going to be maybe at a constant. You know, maybe they're not always going to have 100% enablement in the upstream, but maybe it gets close. And what that does in the long term is that makes that platform easier to develop on, easier to build products on, and that those products then become easier to upgrade and easier to maintain because the code base is alive. And in any code base that is alive, it is much, much easier to maintain good support, fix bugs, and build Android devices that are world class. So could you uh, explain a little bit what you were doing before the narrow? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. So. I've, I've I've kind of been uh, I've kind of been a bum, I guess a little bit. <laughs> what? I've kind of been an engineering bum. I I uh, I've worked at a a bunch of different companies, um, and so I don't know. Maybe that's not the maybe that's not the right way, but uh, um, uh, maybe a vagabond. That's kind of the better thing, right? Somebody who kind of moves around from place to place, I, I suppose, um, in search of in search of a of an ideal, in search of fun projects. So. Um, I've, I've worked at uh, Polycom and helped them develop uh, Android-based video conferencing solutions. Uh, before Polycom, I worked at Qualcomm, and I, I worked in a capacity where I was able to work a lot with the customers and kind of see their enablement issues firsthand, and being in those being in those rooms and, and watching that enablement happen in real time and, and watching the issues that they had really warped my brain to be very sensitive to any changes that, 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 that slow that down unnecessarily. Um, and it just made me really appreciate this system-wide integration that goes on. And what kind of issues that system-wide integration uh, can have. And they're not always technical issues. In a lot of way, in a lot of cases, the issues are, are, are very um, uh, people-oriented. So, <laughs> so, so you were there in the rooms while uh, historic devices were finished? Yeah, yeah, so I, I had gone on site with, with, with with, uh, with, with Google and, and even with Palm uh, to work through issues that they were having uh, doing you know final qualification of uh, Qualcomm uh, Qualcomm based Android on the devices G1? on the G1 um, and uh, the, uh, the Nexus one and the G2 um, and you and know and but but in a sense you know, and just to, to put a to put a, a, a thing out there, um, you know, there's a lot of really awesome engineers at Qualcomm, and I think Qualcomm does this better than most companies, where they really do, you know, throw their weight behind the product that they're trying to get out, and they have this product-based focus. So, what that does is that it does allow the engineers to really get personally involved with the products that they're trying to get out the door. I mean. It, a develop a development an OEM doesn't need to an OEM doesn't need to you know go through an FAE for every single question. They have a one-to-one -one connection with the engineer of the code that they're actually trying to integrate. And I, having worked in that mode for a while, I actually bring that to Lenaro and say, 
you know, silos don't work. Projects work. Putting, you know, it's it's all for one and one for all. We all, if there's a problem, we all need to get on it. And we all need to fix it. We all need to focus on it because that helps us execute and that helps get product out the door. And that product focus is at times at odds with the upstream world where, you know, upstream co uh, concerns kind of reign supreme. But it's been a good experience because I've had to balance that product first focused with the long term uh, kernel focus. And at times it can be a little frustrating, but it's a good learning experience. So, you know, having been in those rooms to, to enable those to enable those devices and I mean don't I don't want to misrepresent things. I mean I didn't develop a lot of this platform. I developed actually very, very little tiny bits of this thing and, and a lot of what I've what I what I was involved in was, you know, integration and debugging weird problems that happened in the system level. But, but that was good, you know. And um, and I was I was I, I consider it very fortunate that that I was able to have those experiences. So pretty much, pretty soon is a million Android devices shipped per day. Uh, yeah, Android is going completely insane, right? Well, what is Android? I mean, fundamentally, why does Android work? Why is it so easy to deal to to uh, to use it to put products together? It's easy because it's a, it's a whole solution. Not only technical, but ecosystem-wise, test-wise. When I pull an Android uh, platform, I have the tests, I have the frameworks, I have a framework to build apps. I have an app. Everything I need to create a device that can participate in the ecosystem, I can get from Google. How much more open do you need? Am I, do I just pull some random kernel? No. I get an entire fully integrated for a class of device system. And what that's going to allow is as those device classes increase, Google goggles, phones, tablets, laptops, you know, the, the camera I'm talking on right now. Android won't just be, I won't have an Android device. I'll have a device and it will run Android. So that's everything. Everything. Android is going to be part of the planet, kind of like naturally. It already is. How is it not? Every single person I see when I uh, we're in Hong Kong here, and, and every single person I see on the subway is chatting on their Android device. It's already happened, but I think that the domains in which it's going to happen will will grow and will increase, and that is why it, it's so critical. It's so important for all of the e the ecosystems that are supporting Android to come together and to have these, you know conversations to make it more efficient to to even more efficient to develop products you like the founding fathers no I mean the oh I wouldn't say that no 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 the Google <laughs> no, engineers they're the founding fathers Andy Rubin's the one that had yeah. the idea I'm just a guy that's been in the trenches and making it you know making but these visions of, happen you 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 you'd seen what happens and you're there and you're doing it but I mean like uh, a few billion people are going to access the internet for the first time with this software yeah on these devices yeah I mean that's and it's happening th that's a uh, you know technology allows us to do things it, it's their their tools and we needed a device that allowed us to communicate that was easy to build and and fun and and Android allows allows us to build those easily and um, and at low cost <laughs>